today I'm speaking to Nikki, Romeo's mom, one of our office favorites. And Romeo's 12. Yes, he is, yes. Okay. And so I want to talk to you. Well, I'm, I'm Romeo's doctor, but I'm also a mother. So, mom to mom, I have such admiration what you've been through. It's such a crazy, amazing, brave story. So, I. I know there are a lot of moms that can relate to that. You've put up such a brave fight for him. So let's talk about that fight a little bit. Uh, Romeo's had full body CRPS for five years? Uh, coming up four years in March. Tell me about your journey. Nick. Um, four years ago, Romeo I was playing rugby and received a, quite a significant injury to his right knee. Saw the knee swell to the size of a soccer ball. and. We found ourselves in hospital for around three months. At that time, they really had no explanation for what was happening. And he was in a wheelchair on and off for the next 12 months. That led us to uh, working with doctors at the main hospital where we come from. Um, and he was diagnosed with juvenile arthritis. I think as a mum, I knew it wasn't. Um, I, from the beginning, was quite proactive in in my research and working really closely with the medical people and I was starting to question things um, in my own mind um, and in Romeo's response to certain treatments that they were uh, wanting to um, trial and implement. I think the thing all along for me was that it was really important uh, for me to uh, not treat the symptom at the time but for us to get to, to the root of the problem. Also for me, it was really important that uh, there was a holistic approach um, and that I wasn't prepared in any way uh, to go down the route of Romeo um, taking long-term medications, in fact, taking no medications. So that's where the, the journey began. Um, unfortunately, that was the first year we then went back to uh, the area where we're from and I continued my research um, and I became really proactive in finding a really close supportive team, pretty much wrap their arms around Romeo and mum, guide me, support me, um, but most importantly um, for us to try and give Romeo some quality of life, which was pretty quickly diminishing right before our eyes. You know, the, the whole CRPS, um, it, it's a tricky one because not just educating myself as the carer, but educating family and friends and also educating uh, teachers and staff that worked alongside him. You know, as the years progress, the symptoms become more. In the last 12 months, things became very clear that he was getting worse. We worked very closely with his team and his myotherapist who has walked the journey with us and supported me through many sessions of crying in her room and I think sometimes I needed the therapy more than what Romeo did. And we sat down and we had a really honest conversation around how things were progressing and, and going downhill. Romeo this year came to the school that I'm at and probably unfortunate for him, he was in my math class. Um, and I guess removing myself emotionally as, a, as the parent and then as the educator, it was very clear to me um, that his working memory was going. And no matter what kind of tricks I pulled out of my bag as a teacher, um, it was not helping him in any way. Um, I guess at home you see those where you give them a message or a set of instructions or things or he was unable to kind of lift something out of the oven with mittens on because more often than not it would drop um, and he'd just be looking at me like how did that happen. So there were those signs at home but then stepping into the educational side of things, huge impact, not to mention the physical elements of not being able to get out of bed some days, taking up to an hour to get him ready for school. Um, some days the that first step out of bed with CRPS 
patience. It's that where even as the mum, I used to hold my breath every morning and pray to God that he was going to be able to get up that day. Some days we could, some days we couldn't. And then there was the whole running the shower. Was the skin going to be able to handle that water pressure? Yeah. Or was it going to mean just have to take another another avenue that day. So very quickly, I realised that whilst I am very proactive and I was keeping myself very well armed with uh, what was going on uh, with his body, I knew I needed to find you. Yeah. I didn't know where you were, but I knew I needed to find the clinic or the place. You, uh, you told me about a moment where you sat around a boardroom table with 12 men, mm -hmm. you're a single mom, mm -hmm. and you had to fight for Romeo. Yep. That was the turning point. So um, I was, I was in a boardroom. We, at that stage, Romeo had been up and had an uh, MRI scan, and it had come back showing quite significant shadows around his spine and to the front right lobal. They had uh, pretty much prepared me uh, that they thought at that stage that uh, he might have cancer. So that, that was the turning point for me where I went, um, this is real, this is real and um, let's do what we have to do. Um, fortunately, because I am a tad stubborn, um, I needed to know more um, and we delved further and um, I asked for a second opinion and we went to another hospital and it was then both were presented and um and it was inflammation it was inflammation encasing uh the, the spinal cord and the front right lobal so i kind of breathed for a slight moment then um we came back to the table and um that day they said to me that um basically it was all in Romeo's head. There is nothing wrong with him. However, we've got a brown paper bag for you um, and we'd like to prescribe gabapentin and antidepressants. So there was absolutely no way my son was going to go on that med medication. I made that very clear. Sadly, their response to me was uh, if I chose not to um, follow their recommendations, there was nothing more that they could do for him. Um, and that if he were to end up in a flare or end up in, in pain as, as he'd been many times, that um, it was probably best I didn't come back and present at the ER with him. So I guess that was the turning point. That was for me the point where I went, you know what, that's okay, I now know where I stand. And even hearing that, that was scary. That was really scary because it's at that moment you go, okay, it's us against the world. You know, we went back to the coast and that's when I, I guess I elevated um, my search and I elevated the team that we surrounded ourselves in. And I had to be his voice. I had to be his voice. I had to be, every warrior needs a chief. And that's how I looked at it. He's my warrior, he's my CRPS warrior. But you know what? He's been nine to 12, he's nearly 13 through this journey. He was still a young boy. Um, so I needed to be his chief, but being a chief and being a mum, that's a lot to, to take on. We're here and I thank the Lord every day that and everyone asks me, how did you find the clinic? Oh, goodness me, it probably was three o'clock in the morning um, amongst marking and doing assessments or doing whatever and doing CRPS research that I came across you. So I'm just, I'm very grateful and I feel really blessed that we're here. We're grateful too. I'm so in love with your son. He's fantastic. Yeah, he's a beautiful boy. Yes, mm. inside and out. Um, you guys, you send Romeo here with your mother from mm -hmm. Australia on an airplane. I know parents watch and they're overwhelmed by the cost and the distance of travel. So can you cover those two things for me, Nikki? 
look, I think cost is insignificant. It, it really, and, and talking to other carers in the, in the waiting room, and you will do, I mean, all of us as parents, you would lie in front of a bus for your child. So it, it is, there is always that element. Um, and you know, we all have to work, we all have bills to pay, but you just have to do what you have to do. Um, so I think everyone has their own journey in how they get here financially. I guess if I could say to any parent, just reach out to whoever you can, whether you have fundraisers, whether you borrow the money, whether you sell things, um, just get your child here, Bring, do whatever you can. You can always continue to work. We're the healthy ones. You might have to work another 10 years. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. Because I think no amount of money, and now that I'm here, can ever replace seeing your child get their life back. Because very, very slowly, I felt like my son was dying. I felt like my son was dying. Sorry. You don't have to apologise. So it didn't matter what I did, I was going to get him here. Um, and I guess I'm saying to parents that there is, there is this clinic and however you can get here, you must be the voice for your child and, and don't just take what you're being told do your research be their voice and you know the body is just such an amazing tool and with the work here at the clinic you can heal your child um so and i know people might be sitting at home saying well that's easy for you to say you've managed to get the money um you know it's not easy it's, it's not going to be easy in the future, but it's worth every single cent. So putting him on that plane was really difficult, I guess, internally, um, but I knew that it was where I needed to send him. Um, and I'm just, I'm really blessed that my mum um, was just so willing to step up. Um, Bless her, she'd been away travelling for two months down the bottom of Australia and kind of in her second last week I was like, Mum, um, I'm wondering if you can come home a week earlier because um, I need you to go uh, to America. She's like, what on earth for? Um, and there was just, there wasn't even a second thought. I was like, of course I can, get everything sorted, let's go. It was difficult, five weeks, oh boy. It was the longest five weeks. I think for me as the adult, I was able to process the advantages of him being here. His brothers really missed him. We're a pretty tight unit and everyone that knows us is, you know, where, there's, where I am, there's three ducks following all the time. So we are the awesome foursome. So um, it's been hard and even right now, Romeo's here in the clinic and his brother's second brother's here with us, um, but the little one's back home, the grandparents. So both ends of the journey have been a bit of an emotional tug for me, but you know what? Short-term pain, long-term gain. And that's what I've talked to the two younger boys about, that for this short time, um, we are apart, but Romeo's going to get his life back. How is Romeo doing? Oh, he's fabulous. So today is the best day uh, to be talking to you. So, oh boy, um, excellent. He loves working with Bryce. Yes. Um, so today they went in there and they worked really hard and Romeo got to 100. So, uh, he, you know, he's a bit of a competitive boy and so he wanted those numbers and he's worked hard for them. So yeah, very proud moment today and just, oh, I went outside with Bryce and um, Bryce had him running up and down and gosh, just to see my son running without a limp, without any pain, 
his body to be aligned and just looking like a 12 year old boy is just a blessing in every way. Mm. I get emotional. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's a great story. Thank you so much for sharing your story because we have so many desperate parents out there um, with CRPS and POTS and ehlers danlos Syndrome watching this and they've, um, they're walking you at your journey down the same road and I'm ecstatic for your son and I'm in awe of what you've been through. Oh, thank you. I, it's uh, like I say, I think every journey in life teaches you a lot um, and I think um, this whole journey has just taught us to be grateful and thankful for the, the people that we've come into contact both at home that have supported us but and here in the clinic so thank you all.